take a moment and pray with me? Most gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, let me assure you that my first week in ministry is one that I will never, ever forget. <laughs> it was surely one for the record books. And although we missed last Sunday due to the storm, I'm excited that we can worship to get together today, especially in a place that has electricity and some air conditioning. Amen. Well, in February, I received a phone call in the middle of the day from an unidentified West Virginia number. And I'll be honest, I thought, who's calling me now? This couldn't be good news because anyone that knows me knew that Wednesday was one of my busiest days during the week, at least in the spring semester. I had class all day, and I was also working uh, as a student pastor in a church, and I had Ash Wednesday service that day. So it's a little busier than normal. So I quickly answered the phone, expecting bad news. And then I heard the voice of Mark Connor, my district superintendent. And then I really panicked. And he said, I remember him saying, Lauren, Take a deep breath. It's okay. See, I kept thinking, I had to have done something to, got, to have gotten in trouble, but I didn't know what. <laughs> because he told, Mark told me in December not to plan to hear from him until sometime in late March or early April about an appointment. So I was very shocked when he called on Ash Wednesday, asking me to pray about coming to Sand Hill United Methodist Church. So I took a deep breath, and I prayed, and I called him back the next day and said, yes, I will go. And we ended that phone call with a reminder for me to continue praying. And I did. And when I was praying, a, sort of, a thought sort of came to me. That being Ash Wednesday, that was, although it's the day that marks the 40 days leading to the cross, it's also a time that in the Christian life where we think about baptism and what our baptismal covenant means for us. And since ministry is where we tie all of our baptismal connections to, there was no better day to receive the call to take an appointment than Ash Wednesday, if you ask me. So that started things through the ball rolling, and it wasn't long after that that I received phone calls and emails from people here at Sand Hill. I immediately felt the love, enthusiasm, excitement for me to come, which made me excited and looking forward to being with you. And then somehow, after my arrival here, which was welcoming as is I shared, there was a large crew to help me unpack and unload, then an even larger welcoming crew that kept stopping by this week to check on me after post derecho storm, right? So I felt right at home. But after accepting the appointment, I was anxiously awaiting my first visit here to Sand Hill in March. I was really lucky to get to come still during Lent and experience one of the fish fries. However, that's not what I'll remember most from my first visit. What I remember most is at the end of my visit, coming outside and seeing a dark sky, feeling sticky air, and leaves turning upside down. As you can imagine, it was all the signs that a storm was on its way, and sure enough, the storm did come. But it wasn't the storm that I'm going to remember. It was the double, double rainbow that came afterwards. See, I love rainbows. And double rainbows, for me especially, bring double the joy. I don't have any statistic to give you this morning, but double rainbows seem to be a rarity if you ask me. It was then and there, that day I was reminded of God's promise to not destroy the earth and the people again. And as I looked at the double rainbow, I was reminded of the very words Bishop Grove had shared with a group of us that day, that there are no coincidences in life, only connections. Amen. Yeah. My friends, the double rainbow was not a coincidence, but a connection. Yeah. A connection of God's promise for a future with hope. It was also a connection with a sense of affirmation that this is what God wanted for us as the people of Sand Hill United Methodist Church. I watched the rainbow for several miles as I drove away and felt a peace come over me. It was one of those types of peace that comes only from the Prince of Peace himself. A peace that surpasses all understanding. The peace that can only come from Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So when the time came for me to write a sermon for my first Sunday, 
all I could think about was the double rainbow. And rest assured, I thought about this before the storm hit. It wasn't some, it just, just coincidence. And I was immediately taken to the story of Noah's Ark. And I think we're all familiar enough with the story of Noah's Ark that I don't have to go over it. But for me, the most fascinating part of that story is what's not in the text. You know, you probably all ask the same question. What was life like on that boat? Yeah. <laughs> what could it have been like for 40 days and 40 nights to be in close quarters with animals that had no place to go to the bathroom except the boat, with your closest family members, and you had no place to get away yourself to take a breather? I know many of you probably spent this last week, maybe in similar circumstances, in close quarters, without a place to necessarily get away for a long period of time, to rest and recover, perhaps a little closer to family than you would like at times, and other times not imagining how you could survive without them. I know I wouldn't have been able to survive the storm in the days after if it hadn't been for all of you who came by to check on me. Although the storm was not what many would claim as an ideal start for my time here at Sand Hill, or how I necessarily planned my first week in ministry, I think it was a gift from God. Amen. It was an invitation to be the body of Christ in the world. See, this week, people have taken care of their neighbors. They've talked to people in need and met those needs. They've checked on those who are elderly or without water. People have shared all that they've had. My own family wouldn't have been able to make it home if it hadn't been for the graciousness of some people in the community and helping us get gas so my dad could make it back. It was a week of being community in a new way and building relationships with one another. I believe Noah's family was also invited on that boat to engage and build in new relationships. It couldn't have been an easy life on that boat, on the same ship as animals for 40 days and 40 nights. Not something that sounds like I, you know, I would ever want to do, especially with that smell. But in the midst of the storm, the chaos, and the unpleasantness, Noah's family was called into a new way of being. They emerged from the boat with a new understanding of each other, themselves, creation, and of God. But Noah's experience on the boat is more than about being in new relationships. Life on the ship was also a reminder of what Christian life is like. See, in the Christian tradition, ships are a symbol of the church. If you stop and think about that symbol, it's just very appropriate. We need ships to get items from one place to the other. In some places, ships are the only way we have of getting material the fastest. Ships have even been used to spread the gospel message and to start new churches. We depend on ships every day in our life, whether we realize it or not. The church and good news depend on ships every single day, too. And if you stop and think about it as well, Jesus was a ship or a boat person himself. He spent most of his ministry on the shore, or on the boat, or in the walking on water at times. See, as Jesus is no stranger to the seas and to boat ministry, neither should we be strangers to that type of life. See, the way I understand the life on a boat and the Christian journey, there will be storms. There are going to be moments where the water invites chaos to surround us. Moments where we'll be amazed at our own surroundings and all we can say is holy, holy, holy Lord. And moments where we experience Jesus saying, peace, be still. And we'll have moments on the boat where we see rainbows and are reminded of God's promise for our hope-filled future. Life on the boat isn't easy, friends. The Christian life isn't an easy journey. But in the, in the words of John Wesley, best of all is, God is with us. And I don't know about you, but that sounds like good news to me. Amen. Now, I didn't see a rainbow. Donna saw a rainbow after the storm. I don't know about the rest of you, but I looked really hard. Let's see if I can find one. But whether or not I saw the rainbow, I will never forget this first week in ministry. I will also never forget seeing the double rainbow when I came to visit Sand Hill. The thing that always amazes me about rainbows is that you can never catch them. You can drive and drive and drive and walk and walk and walk and you'll never get there. As you move, they seem to move, or at least change location. As I was preparing for my sermon, I was reading a few things about rainbows. And one of the things I learned was that no matter 
Who sees the rainbow?